folks, Rich here at rcinformer.com. Thanks for checking out this video on installing set screws. We use set screws for everything. We use them for uh, holding wheels on, we use them for push rods uh, in an easy connector, uh, we use them for steering arms, uh, and we also use them for uh, gear struts, like all over gear struts. Um, the biggest key really to keeping a set screw in place really is to um, file a good flat spot in the shaft that uh, the set screw is going to be uh, touching, uh, and also using um, blue Loctite, not the red stuff, because the blue stuff uh, or the red stuff kind of keeps it sort of permanent. Um, uh, there's really two basic types of set, set screw applications. Uh, the first kind is really a no load situation, and the second is one that's under a load. The first, a no load application, would be like this wheel where the wheel collar really isn't under any kind of stress at all. Uh, it's merely there just to keep the spinning wheel from, from coming off. The second kind is the kind that's under a load, and there's really two types of those. Uh, the first kind is a push-pull type, where you may have a, a, a steering servo or a throttle servo in here that has an easy connector, and the easy connector um, uh, is under a lot of uh, uh, push-pull type load. The second kind is a rotational type load, which you'll find in something like a steering arm for a nose wheel steering on this end of uh, of the, the system, or in particular, a landing gear strut, where you don't want the strut to turn during takeoffs and landings. So you often will have a set screw, sometimes even two set screws that go onto the shaft, and uh, that's what you want to, um, you want the, those are there to keep this thing from rotating. Um, I've found that uh, over the years I've developed a couple of techniques to make some of these things stay on a little bit better, and uh, I'm going to show you those here today. I, uh, I have found that my models have been much more reliable and much safer after using some of these methods. Uh, and I'm going to show you those again all in this video. So without further ado, on to the video. The first type of installation is uh, the simplest kind, which is really it's under no load at all. And uh, it's just a wheel collar to hold a wheel in place. What you want to do is tighten the set screw down a little bit so it leaves a mark in the metal. Sometimes it leaves more of a mark than others depending on how soft the metal is. But when you remove it, you can kind of see a little ring there. It's kind of hard to tell with this one because the metal's a little bit hard. But uh, anyway, you're going to take your uh, rotary tool at that, this point and you're just going to cut a little flat spot in there. Okay, and there we have a nice flat area in there. We can go ahead and put our wheel back on. And uh, we'll take our wheel collar and we'll put that back in place and tighten it up. And uh, you want to make sure that you got enough play in there, enough for the wheel to move, and uh, you're good to go. It's nice and smooth. You're also going to want to put some Loctite on there. And uh, one of the things you're going to see too is right after I put the flat spot in there, it now makes a little mark right in there. And you can see where the screw uh, actually cuts a little, uh, um, uh, puts a little dent in the metal there. And that's good because that will help keep it on. Um, you take your uh, blue Loctite and you want to use the blue stuff because the, uh, the red stuff is uh, uh, really pretty permanent if you want uh, something to stay in place. Uh, you use, uh, or if you want to stay in place forever, you use the red stuff. But you always want to use the blue because then you can get the screw off as well. So put a little bit of thread lock on there. Go ahead and put it back. Put your wheel collar on. And uh, you should be all done. Tighten that up. And if there's some excess you want to clean off, you can go ahead and do that. And you're good to go. That wheel should stay on, and again, it's under no load, and this is the first uh, installation. Here's the second type of, uh, uh, of application. This is one that is under load, and this is a push-pull rod for a uh, steering linkage. And uh, although it's not a wheel collar, it's an easy connector, uh, but the principle is still the same, and you're still going to want a flat spot here. What I do is uh, I will go ahead and I will put a mark on both sides. Once I find the location I want it, I'll put a mark on both sides of the rod and that will tell me where I want the flat spot to be. 
The next thing you're going to do is just uh, remove the rod like so and then you're ready to cut your flat spot. Now I'm going to have to pull this up out of here and I'm going to put just a piece of cardboard under it there and you're going to take your, uh, your Dremel and you're going to go ahead and file a flat spot in there. And there we go, there's a nice flat spot. Now, I made it a little wider uh, than it really needed to be, or a little longer than it needed to be, uh, in case I need to adjust it. And, uh, and uh, now I have a little extra room for that. Another thing I'll do is I'll just sort of round this edge here. Uh, it's pretty sharp because I cut it with a pair of uh, diagonal cutters. And uh, that'll help uh, to get the, uh, so it'll fit into the hole, back into the hole of the easy connector better. There you go. Now it's not uh, not nearly as sharp and it should fit right back in there. So I'll just grab a pair of pliers and see if we can get it to go back in there. There we go. Sometimes that's kind of a pain getting that in there. Okay, now once it's in there, we uh, go ahead and line it up with our flat spot. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, my Allen wrench and I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Using a little bit of blue thread lock, you want to go ahead and uh, put just a little bit on the threads. Not very much. Just enough to kind of coat it lightly. And then when you're done, you go ahead and just put it right back into the easy connector. Make sure it's right over the flat spot. And uh, that's it, you're done. Now you have a nice solid push-pull connector that won't come off. This is the third type of uh, set screw installation where, what you, where it's under a rotational type load. So what you want to avoid is you want to avoid this wheel uh, twisting or this shaft twisting inside of the retract mechanism. The other difference is, is that you have two set screws, one on each side that you can use to keep it from uh, coming out. Um, the difference with this one is not only are you going to put a flat spot in the shaft, but you're also going to flatten the tip of the set screw to help keep it from rotating. Here's how you're going to do that. Now before I actually file this down, I want to use this pointed tip to actually mark the, uh, the shaft and the position that I want the flat spot to be in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount that. I'm going to go ahead and put that screw in. And I'm going to tighten it up enough so it leaves a mark in the shaft where I want my flat spot to be. Then I'll go ahead and I'll back it out. And then I'll go ahead and I'll file the end of this thing flat so it'll match up against the flat spot. Um, once I take this thing off, and you can take a look at how this thing looks, you can see the mark that it made. So now I know exactly, and you can tell by looking, now I know exactly where my flat spot is going to be. Now I can file this flat spot first, okay, and get it nice and flat. Then I can go ahead and file my set screw, and then the set screw flat spot will go right up against the flat spot here. So you're going to use this, uh, use the set screw as a tool to make your mark where you want your flat spot on the shaft to be. You simply, here's how you're going to do it, you're going to simply take a Dremel tool, you're going to want to hold that in place if you can, and you're going to want to basically just file the end of this thing off. So, just like this, you're going to very carefully file the end of this thing off. And what I'm trying to do is just get a very flat surface. 
uh, on here. Now when you're done, what you're going to end up with is just a very flat end on it, okay? And what that's going to do with, uh, you know, mounting a landing gear or mounting a steering arm or something, is this is going to actually touch against the flat spot, okay, on the shaft, and that's going to keep it from rotating. Okay, one important thing to remember, guys, is that when you do file this flat spot in here, or flat on the end of this, you want to make sure you file enough that you have enough of a flat surface. And also, you don't want to file too much away that you file into the threads of the screw. If you file into the threads of the screw and you put this back inside of, uh, of the hole here, um, what you're going to find is you're going to end up tearing up these threads. So you want to be careful as you're putting the flat spot in, again, that you don't, uh, don't cut uh, too deep to the point where you, uh, you start cutting into the threads. Okay, here's the finished product. You have a flat spot here and a flat spot here. Um, notice that this installation is a little bit different than some because I had to use a brass sleeve around it to get it to fit. Um, but, but nevertheless, I now have two um, flat areas and I have two set screws in here that both have flat spots on them. So the flat spots are going to go right against the flat spots and now you don't have to really worry about them spinning. I have found uh, often in the past um, that when I just use the set screw as is with the pointy end on it, that this thing still ends up rotating and my wheel turns as I'm, as I'm flying around or as I'm taking off and landing. And I have all kinds of issues with that. So I've used this technique a lot for a lot of airplanes and uh, I have found that, uh, uh, that it works very, very well. So to keep all your shafts from spinning around, uh, you'll want to use this technique, and of course you want to use a little bit of blue thread lock in there. But now this is nice and solid, it won't rotate at all, and uh, this will keep all your shafts from spinning. Now here's an example, uh, an extreme example that I thought was worth mentioning. Um, this is, whole system is subject to a lot of play if not done, if the flat spots are not set up properly. Uh, this first picture here is Hobby King's, or the steering arm for Hobby King's uh, Giant Cessna 182. At the top on the steering arm here, you'll see there's a, a single easy connector with uh, um, one set screw in the top. Uh, and that set screw I left alone, and I filed a flat spot in the rod, and uh, the pointy end of the set screw uh, bites right into that, that rod and keeps it... Uh, uh, no, it keeps all the play out of it. This next picture here um, shows where you can uh, end up with a lot of play and get into a lot of trouble with this. Um, there, you notice there's three set screws that go into two different shafts here. These are subject to a lot of play due to uh, rotation. So um, you want to make sure that in a system like this, um, that you have all three set screws uh, filed down with a flat spot in it and you make sure that all the shafts have three flat spots on it. If not, uh, there's going to be a whole lot of play in this system. So just be aware if you run into a system like this, as long as you do the set spots right, uh, you will have a play-free system even on something as complex as this. Okay guys, here's another example of uh, uh, a set screw uh, being put into a, a rotating type of a shaft. This is a steering arm for my Advance uh, 25E, but here's another example where you're going to want to use a flat spot on the shaft and a flat spot on the screw. Now E-Flight already provided a really nice flat spot on this shaft and they put it in exactly the right place. The other thing that's real interesting is the screw, as it comes from the factory, is actually already flat on the end. Okay, now it's not a set screw, but it still is a set screw. It's not one that uses an Allen bolt. It's one that uses a, uh, a screwdriver. Um, but anyway, um, the, the point is, is that it's real important that um, when you're doing anything, any kind of a shaft like this that has a rotational type of a load on it, um, and you need it to say, or you need it to, uh, to not rotate, you really want to have a flat spot on both the shaft and on the screw, and that'll uh, ensure that uh, you don't have any play in this system. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you find it uh, very useful for, uh, for a lot of your airplanes and I hope you find that uh, it makes your stuff, uh, again, more reliable and safer like I've found it works with mine. Um, remember, when you're doing these flat, when you're doing these, uh, installing these things, um, uh, make sure you always use a flat spot 
uh, and also consider uh, the type of metal that the shaft is made out of. Some are harder and some are softer. The softer ones tend to get a little bit better bite uh, when you put your set screw in and that actually helps you a lot. Um, uh, and use thread lock. Um, the, about the only time you might not want to use thread lock is if you have a wheel collar that's made out of aluminum and it actually has very fine threads. I've found that sometimes using thread lock on uh, fine aluminum threads tends to actually destroy the thread. So, uh, and when you tighten a screw or a uh, set screw that's uh, in, an in a piece of aluminum, very often the aluminum is actually a good bite uh, on the metal and it actually stays in there. You don't need thread lock at all. So that's about the one time um, you don't need thread lock is when you're using aluminum. Anyway, we got more videos coming out guys. I hope you enjoyed it again. Uh, please uh, subscribe and leave your comments here. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.